Burlak. Frankly speaking, the term AT vehicle is not quite correct, because there is no such a vehicle that can move across any terrain. There is a certain compromise between universality and off-road performance in this term, and always one against another. There is no absolute off-road performance, even helicopters have their weather conditions limits, landing constraints, etc. What can you tell about ground transport? When designing a vehicle of high off-road performance, it is necessary to have clear vision of the functions it must perform. It is in general, and as we are talking about the specific AT vehicle, anyhow this term is more traditional. Let's discuss it. This video is made by me to avoid not quite correct interpretations in mass media concerning AT vehicle Burlak built by ourselves. I hope this information can clarify some questions regarding AT vehicle, because it is the first-hand information that is provided by me, Alexei Makarov. So, AT vehicle Burlak. Burlak is the vehicle equipped with the low-pressure tires, intended for year-round operation under the conditions of the far north and tundra. As this vehicle is not a serial one, built in one piece, then the parameters modifications are possible in the near future. 6x6 wheel arrangement, 1700 x 750, 32 wheels, displacement of each wheel makes up 1300 kg when a disc is equipped with floats. Toyota 1KZ TE engine. Turbo diesel 145 horsepower with a torque of 350 by 2000 revolutions per minute. Automatic transmission. Two transfer cases allowing to choose four options of transmission operation depending on conditions and load. Cruising speed on the solid ground is 50 km per hour at 2500 revolutions per minute. There is no minimum stable speed, as the automatic transmission allows to move without any troubles from 0 km per hour and faster. That is very important at driving through the marshlands. In economy mode on the firm ground, the fuel consumption is about 35 liters. In off-road conditions, it makes up for 6 liters per hour. Fuel reserve is 360 liters. Unladen weight of the vehicle is 4,700 kg. Gross vehicle weight is 7,000 kg. The vehicle is capable to carry up to 8 people and up to 1.5 tons of cargo, without losing floatability. Water speed is up to 6 km per hour due to the lowering water propeller. The vehicle is equipped with independent spring suspension. Ground clearance is about 720-750 mm, depending on the load. Engine and all systems, fuel, air, brake, hydraulics are located inside waterproof boat that is in the warmth and could be accessed from the cabin. Any repair except for the engine replacement can be made in tundra conditions as the maximum weight of units does not exceed 90 kg. It is the weight of central transfer case. In addition, the design of the boat provides easy access to all units. The vehicle has centralized system for tire pumping, two autonomous cabin heaters of 2 kW. Starting preheater, winch, 10 bunks, table, gas stove and other necessary stuff. My mouth is watering, I'm drooling like this, I'm sitting and waiting. We're gonna make some real food now. We have cool stuff hood with lighting. Nano hood with nano lighting. Awesome! The vehicle also provides maximum comfort for both driver and passengers. Getting some snow. For melting. Great! Can you turn up the volume a little bit?
Refrigerator, there you are. The vehicle was designed for a certain task to reach the North Pole and come back with a team of 8 people and 2 cars. It means that we will need to build another similar vehicle in accordance with testing results and try to reach the North Pole by then. The North Pole should not be confused with the North Magnetic Pole. The North Magnetic Pole is located off the coast of Canada and has been reached by the Top Gear team by Toyota cars. Our challenge is more difficult. What shown in this video is the first stage of the vehicle testing in preparation for the expedition to the North Pole. During the testings, the vehicle passed overload testing, checked for capability to travel in conditions of drifting ice, to float in salt water, to exit from the water onto ice, and other miracles that we would encounter during the expedition. and hold the brake. Hey, pull over here! Trailer, trailer! Well, it's attached to the cables, let him pull it out. On the basis of test results, the relevant conclusions on the structural elements modification have been made. The total distance traveled reaches 2,800 km. Cross winter roads, tundra, mountains and virgin snow terrain. And where all this started to flow, it's a type. Vasily Yelagin made this journey with us, the man who visited the North Pole twice on Yumele ATVs built by himself, besides for the second time, crossing it on his way to Canada without any outside support. Certainly his help and opinion on the capability of achieving the cherished goal by Burlux is very important for us. Against the backdrop of the information that was accumulated by him and his team during previous expeditions, our task was simplified. But the size of heavy vehicles means somewhat different movement technique, which we still have to work on. Well, I wonder how it's gonna drive here. Four or five strokes, the ice is thick enough here. Will it withstand the vehicle or not? However, he expressed cautious optimism about the success of our adventure adjusted for external factors that cannot be predicted. Got stuck. What we have to do now? Do we need to break the ice completely to make it drowned? We got what to do. Yes, to break it, to make it float evenly. Got a contact. Leshka, that's classic. Got a shake? Now. Well, I expect it. Impressive. Now we still need to get out of here. Such a mutant has been taken out.
Later we will go by two vehicles and six trailers to Severna Zimla. Golemiany Island with Polar Station of the same name and then begin the journey to the Pole. In fact, it's not so simple and I'm keeping myself from loud statements about this. As they say, time will show. The process is going on well. If the valued viewers have patience to watch and listen to this video until this point, then they can't avoid asking themselves, will Brulac AT vehicles be manufactured and how much could it cost? A lot of work has been done, and is it really all for the sake of some child's dream about the North Pole? From the point of view of common sense, it is complete nonsense. I fully agree with you. In Russia, there are many different all-terrain vehicles with less capacity, but there are no ATVs of the like configuration, and there is a need for such vehicles. The vehicle, of course, has the right to life and the prospects of using it in various fields are very extensive. But to build one or two vehicles and to establish production are two different things, another level of investments, both financial and organizational. As the creator of this vehicle, I still hope that there will be some company ready to get things moving. Although on my account this is the eighth vehicle for the last six years, built by us in a private workshop. But unfortunately, I haven't moved beyond this configuration. There were a lot of talks on this subject, but all ended there. So I do not have illusions about this. I asked Makarov, let's take snowshoes. Now we would be like chuk 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 chuk. Of course, there are some options, but you can talk about volumes, prices and terms very roughly. Therefore, at the moment, in the spring of 2016, we have what we have. Again, time will show how things will be. Thanks to everyone who found the strength to watch this story till the end. If you have any questions, please contact us by phone or by email.